Last time I began the outrageous task of filling in roughly 500 to 800 blisters and 10 through holes that we weren't going to need in our boat anymore. I filled the holes in from the inside first and then attacked from the outside, mixing two part epoxy, wetting out the fiberglass cloth patches. using the rest of the batch to make some thickened epoxy, which helps to smooth out the whole thing in my experience. At this point, if we had an epoxy roller, this is where we would use one, but smoothing out by hand also works. What matters most is to remove all the air bubbles under the fiberglass cloth. Finally, the icing on the cake to build up where the fiberglass job may remain a little bit concave. And then later, when it's all dry, I'll give it all a good sand. Here we are in a strange new land. And my favorite thing when traveling is seeing the unique wildlife and trying to capture that on camera. While the boatyard doesn't seem like the best place to catch wildlife on film, there are plenty of critters around here. There is something especially magical and mystical that I've been dreaming about capturing since I got to Mexico. Flamingos are the weirdest bird, and they're here. They've been invading my camera lens, flying by far away in the distance. Careful. You know we're going on the kayak, so you rush down the stairs. You can't go in the kayak first, Chocolate. You have to walk. Luckily, there are still plenty of mangroves along this coastline, a perfect habitat for this brilliant bird life that I'm seeking with the camera. Around every corner, there's a potential to meet some new and interesting creatures. Choco, you're no fun for bird watching. The tide has been especially low these days, so it's a good time to go hunt some flamingos. They are wading birds, looking for num-nums in the shallow waters. Flamingos are omnivorous, sorting through the muck to find crustaceans, insects, and also algae. Their distinctive-looking upside-down bills allow them to filter out the mud from their meals. The organic pigments of the plants, animals, and algae that they eat are what turn their plumage that flamboyant color. It's pretty difficult to go bird watching with a dog, so no award-winning shots here or anything, but I was pretty stoked to finally see some flamingos in real life. We are mixing epoxy. It's very, very, very time sensitive. And we've got a boat. I think the construction site over there is on fire. Pops are there. The emergency services eventually all arrived and began to put out the blaze with very little drama. And later, the recycling crew continued to chop up the steel vessel as if nothing had ever happened.
At this point in the hollow journey, I've spent at least 300 hours sanding, epoxying, sanding, and then epoxying again. I've come to know the ground around the boat very well. And almost every time I look down, within a minute or two, I can spot some more wildlife. I do believe that these are brown dog ticks. Choco, our dog, is medicated to protect them from being bitten by these, but I am not. They are literally everywhere on the pavement and on wooden blocks. And this is the guy I found on my leg. And that's the guy I found in between Choco's toes. And here are some other ones I killed. Gross. They can transmit diseases such as Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, and I have to check all my nooks and crannies every day, every time before I go onto the boat. Be oiling it, but... Time to deal with aligning the engine. Did you clean in there? Yeah, I already sent it in there. First step was to install the new cutlass bearing. Ooh. If you could fit a piece of wood, it would be there. Slipped. Something break? No, but this came down. Okay. Oh no, this cracked. I hold my new C clamp. This was really not going as we had planned, or how the last cutlass bearing install went. Things crooked for no fucking reason. Maybe it got bent from somebody trying to do the same thing. I can see the bentness in here worries me about the the metal, like as if the metal's not getting pushed in the right direction. Yeah, it's not getting, it has to be lower. It has to, I add pressure to it. The C-clamp can't fall. With lots of pain, effort, bending of... Now you cut this back. This is the way not to install your cutlass bearing. So now you have to cut off this horrible, horribly yes. bent excess. Yes. And this is something that will cause people with OCD a lot of pain. It caused me a lot of pain. I was really worried that uh, the pipe was going to, to start buckling in the middle as you pressed it. Instead of going in, it would start buckling, but... Yeah, it could have been worse. could have been worse. Yesterday we hammered these mean sucker in. That was the tightest thing I've ever had to push in in my life. That's what she said. And we had to, I had to grind it off with a disc to remove the lip that had formed from the forces that have been pushed in. And now I've slid in the old shaft back in and I can already see that it looks a lot more center-ish. It has a tendency to stay more centered. No more jiggling. There's absolutely no more play. And hopefully that will allow us to align the engine a little bit better. We are at risk of dinghy, malaria, Lyme disease, uh, Chagas. It's like we, We're just being eaten. We need to get out of here before we end up with multiple insect infested pathogens and plasmodiums and bacteriums and, and all sorts of other politicians. Monkey pox. Monkey pox, yeah. Fairing the bottom has proven to be one of the hardest projects I've ever undertaken. I'm working every day, hours each day, slowly sculpting the bottom of our boat. Meanwhile, there's a beautiful beach town just minutes away, a tourist and expat destination for relaxation and rest.
cruise ship terminal is just several kilometers away. And in that part of Progresso is usually where I do my groceries. And with groceries in hand, I take a stroll to the famous beachfront and check out the local markets. 